Hello, my name is Brian King. I'm Chancellor of the Los Rios Community College District in Sacramento, California. On August 22nd of 2014, we had our annual fall convocation presentation. I had a chance to speak at each of our four colleges in the district, Cosumnes River College, Sacramento City College, American River College, and Folsom Lake College. The topic is the road ahead, the challenges and opportunities coming up for our colleges and our district in 2014. Convocation is a really fun day and a day I look forward to every year. The problem with convocation in the fall is that it means that summer is about over and for me that's a little bit disappointing because summer really is my favorite season of the year and so many fun things happen in the summer. Picnics, baseball games, and the road trip. When you think about road trips, a lot of different images come to mind. People uh, stop and see things that they wouldn't normally see if they were not on a long road trip. So that's part of the summer experience. Most of us at one time or another have taken a road trip with little ones. And really, no sooner than you're out of the driveway, I would guarantee that you've heard those four words. What are those four words? Are we there yet? No matter where we're going, it seems like someone wants to be there more quickly than we can be. And uh, when you take a road trip, the annual convocation experience is a bit of a road trip. And many of you know the team that goes with me, our vice chancellors, Teresa Matista, our newest vice chancellor in finance administrative services, Sue Lorimer, vice chancellor, vice chancellor of education and technology, Bab Sandine, chance, uh, vice chancellor of development and workforce development, and uh, our General Counsel, J.P. Sherry, and Associate Vice Chancellor for Media and Communications, Mitchell Benson. So I had a little bit of that experience myself on uh, Friday, August 22nd, going from place to place. We asked the question, are we there yet? And only after the fifth convocation at the district office can we say we have arrived. That trip, though, is nothing compared to the last several years that have faced Los Rios and community colleges across California and across the United States, really. The road that we have traveled together is a winding road. It's been a bumpy road with uh, budget challenges, a lot of state regulatory challenges, pressure coming from the national government as well. Uh, uh, welcome spotlight, but with that comes some scrutiny and uh, some accountability that is new to us. So it's been a challenging time since 2008, and nothing has been more difficult than the budget cuts. Having to begin every year looking at how much of the budget needs to be cut is just wearing for everyone. We're fortunate that both last year and this year, we are not in a situation where we're having to spend all of our time talking about budget cuts as the budget is improving, and there actually is some new money for community colleges and for the Los Rios Colleges. As we begin the fall of 2014, there actually is a good deal of good news to share. For our employees uh, on August 22nd, by, uh, there's more money in our, uh, in our checking accounts than there was on Tuesday, between Tuesday and Friday. Thanks to the foresight of our governing board, employees have received uh, additional compensation in the form of a retro check. So those deposits went out on Wednesday the 20th. So that's really good news. And that was made possible in part because our negotiations are complete with all three bargaining units that had ongoing negotiations. So that's wonderful news. Retro checks, negotiations complete, and a board of trustees that recognizes the hard work of the men and women in our district, uh, relying in part still on reserves to make these compensation improvements possible. So very appreciative to the leadership of the elected governing board, our board of trustee, trustees for the Los Rios Community College District. With the good news and also with the challenge, it's challenges we face together. It's a good time to look at where we've been and think about where we're going. Many different district-wide successes in the past year. I want to highlight three very quickly that have involved many people from all four colleges and across the district. One is the Career Pathways Trust Regional Collaborative. Senator Daryl Steinberg had the leadership to lead uh, the legislature to approve $250 million dollars for the Career Pathways Trust, and Los Rios was able to play an important role in coordinating the applications in the capital region. There were two different significant applications that resulted in grants in the millions of dollars, and our colleges will be partners with the K-12 districts that are involved in the Career Pathways Trust Regional Collaborative, so a big success for our district and for the region. A process that is underway and much more to come 
is the Adult Ed Consortium led by Sue Lorimer on behalf of the Los Rios District. We have been able to put uh, to bring together many different uh, school districts throughout the region to start visioning for what adult education needs to look like. And Los Rios is leading the consortium. There will be interesting news in the coming years. The funding for adult ed is approved through the legislature and the governor's new budget. And want to emphasize that uh, unlike the initial impression from the governor's uh, proposals, we won't be taking over adult education. We will be collaborating with our K-12 partners to make sure there is a seamless path for adults who did not necessarily complete high school in the traditional fashion and are now needing additional educational services, hopefully leading towards a college education. A third big success for our district is online orientation. It's hard to believe that in a little less than six months, more than 15,000 students have already taken online orientation. So another huge success for our district and for our students. So with all that's happened in the last year, all the challenges we face together and overcome, not surprising that we might wonder, are we there yet as a district? And it would be nice to just pause, take a deep breath and enjoy our successes. And we should enjoy our successes. The question would be, can we take a break for a while? And if you close your eyes and think about one of those most pleasant places in the world in your mind's eye, just close your eyes and think about where you go for rest and relaxation. You might have your toes on a sandy beach with a warm tropical breeze blowing your way. You may be in the mountains. So open your eyes. One place that I think about is Emerald Bay at nearby Lake Tahoe. That might be where your mind goes. But the reality is coming up on Monday, August 25th, more than 75,000 students will come back to our colleges and they are ready for us to help them transform their lives. They're on that path to success and we will be there to serve them and it's very exciting when classes begin. And I've shared with you earlier but just want to uh, re-emphasize who our students are and what the tremendous challenges are that they face. Who are Los Rio students? As many of you understand, 63% of our students, almost two-thirds, identify themselves as low income. So our students are battling poverty. They're coming to us to clear that path between poverty to the middle class and beyond. Because they're uh, low income, 24% are working half time. And think about that, 20 or more hours a week, one in four students. And 12% of our students are working full time. So our students are working very hard at the same time that they are enrolling in our classes. We know that full-time students are more likely to succeed, but only 31% of our students are full-time, and that's related significantly to the income challenges. When they're having to work, having to take care of family responsibilities, it's more difficult to enroll full-time. So one of our challenges is to help students find a way to enroll full-time. And the vast majority of our students expressed an interest to transfer. So we know that 63% of our students ultimately do not transfer. There are other paths that they find, but uh, the largest group of our students, at least initially, express an intent to transfer from Los Rios colleges. So we talked about one of the first questions that someone asks on any road trip is, are we there yet? Another really important question that we need to ask is, are we headed in the right direction? Our students need us to be headed in the right direction and probably need us to, to head in that direction a little more quickly. But that's an important question. Are we headed in the right direction? A little context is helpful. Is the U.S. headed in the right direction? A recent survey indicated that more than two-thirds of Americans think that the United States is headed in the wrong direction. And that's a little discouraging that uh, only a third of Americans think our country is headed in the right direction. Californians, as is often the case, are a little more optimistic, but still more than half of Californians think that the United States is headed in the wrong direction. Is Los Rios headed in the right direction, a little closer to home? The good news is that in our recent employee satisfaction survey, most employees do think we're headed in the right direction. In fact, of those surveyed, 64% of our uh, faculty, staff, and other employees think that we are headed in the right direction. Uh, we also will we'll make available the link to the complete survey results so you'll have a chance to look in more detail at a variety of questions 
On the whole, the survey results are uh, affirming and encouraging. Certainly, there are some responses that provide opportunities for us to do some introspection and uh, find opportunities for improvement as well. As your chancellor, one uh, number that is of a bit of a concern is that between 2008 and 2014, the number of employees who were neutral about whether we were headed in the right direction, that is to say they're uh, taking a bit of a wait-and-see attitude, the number went from 15% to 22%. On one hand, it's easy to understand with the economic downturn and the budget cuts that more uh, of our faculty, staff, and employees would have a wait-and-see approach. But as your chancellor, it's really one of my most important responsibilities to lead the dialogue on the direction we're taking and also to clarify our vision and our plans. So one of uh, my primary goals of this presentation would be by the time you have heard the end of the presentation, if you were among that 22% who were not sure or were neutral whether we were headed in the right direction, by the end of this presentation, you will firmly be in the yes, we are headed in the right direction category. So as we start the journey together for 2014-15, on every trip, you have some idea of challenges that will uh, be on the road ahead. Obviously, some challenges will be unexpected, but some that we know are going to be facing us. The first of three I want to share with you today is broadening access. Quite a bit of negative pressure in recent years on access in California community colleges, the budget being the major cause of limiting of access, but also other changes like repeatability. Limiting the number of times that students can take a class has an impact on access. Changes in financial aid also have an impact on access. So we have to always remain vigilant about broadening access for our students because uh, that's why we're here. Cost increases. Much of the budget news is good, but two cost increases that we all need to keep an eye on together. One that impacts every organization, every employer, is health care costs. We remain hopeful that over the long haul, health care reform at the state and national level may have an impact of bending the cost curve for health care. But in the short term, health care costs continue to rise. The second cost increase that will have a significant impact on our budget is uh, a disappointing part of the budget for this year, which was a shift of retirement, cause, uh, retirement costs in both the STRS and the PERS system from the state to employers and employees. In the current year, the impact of this shift will be felt slightly, but in coming years, it will be a very significant impact on our budget. More than a million dollars for both STRS and PERS will have to be included in our budget on the employer's cost, and employee contributions will also rise, so that will have uh, not a positive impact on take-home pay. So broadening access, cost, in, uh, cost increases, challenges for 2014-15, and the third challenge is accountability to the finish line. A lot of scrutiny about the number of our students who achieve their academic goals, specifically uh, earning certificates and degrees. So accountability is very important, even at the White House, or maybe especially at the White House, a focus on completion and the need for more students to have certificates and degrees. Last week, the week of, uh, of August 15th, I had a chance to be a part of a White House summit on community colleges. And I think it speaks very well for our Los Rios colleges and the work that all of you do that our district was invited to participate. It is a small group of colleges, leading colleges from around the country who are taking part in this discussion. And I love the majestic image of the White House when you talk about a White House summit. The reality is that we were close by, actually next door to the White House in the executive office building but a wonderful opportunity to be meeting with leaders from across the country, with uh, the Secretary of Education and the Undersecretary of Education for Community Colleges and many of the significant funders of the important initiatives that we are, uh, are either already have underway or are considering. So in addition to the three challenges for 2014-15, very related to the challenges are our goals for 2014-15. And as was the case with uh, the earlier slide, three bullet points on goals for 2014-15. The first one is a big one and will uh, occupy a lot of our time and efforts in 2014 as we prepare for accreditation and also develop a process for district strategic planning. 
Accreditation self-evaluations self are underway now. For some of you who have been involved in accreditation for many years, it used to be referred to as the self-study part of accreditation, but uh, self-evaluation is a good description of what happens. We are doing a lot of heavy lifting this fall that will lead to a report, our self-evaluation report. The drafts will be completed by the end of the calendar year. And I almost said rough drafts, but the hope is that the drafts are, are well beyond that stage and uh, we can polish in the spring. And then the big day will be at a date to be determined in October of 2015. Each of our four colleges in the same week will have a site visit from a team of colleagues from around the state and in some cases from the other places in the West in our, in our commission, including Hawaii and other islands in the Pacific. Usually primarily California Community College peers come on the site visits. We are very fortunate as a district that we have a lot of staff members who have been a, a part of accreditation visits to other colleges, so we have a wealth of experience in this process. So much work to be done, but I remain very uh, confident and optimistic that we'll be in great shape in October of 2015, ultimately resulting in a reaccreditation uh, in 2015. In addition to our self-evaluation for accreditation, the accreditation process will help us develop our district strategic planning process in this uh, fiscal year, 2014-15, and then we will develop the new strategic plan in 2015-16. So I really like the way things are laid out, that accreditation will be very informative for the strategic planning process. So instead of what can happen, having two processes uh, running sort of parallel but never touching, the two processes will inform one another and lead to greater outcomes. Now, second goal for 2014-15 is related to the challenges I discussed earlier. Increase access and retain more students. We talked about the downward pressure on access. And uh, as of convocation on August 22nd, 2014, our enrollment is very close to the previous year. So that's good news that we're not behind the way many colleges are. But the reality is there are many more students we need to serve. So we need to increase access. We need to be growing. And one way to do that will be to retain more students. Like so many community colleges, we uh, have almost half of our students new each year. And it's really challenging to find so many new students each year. So one way to improve access and success is to retain more students. So we will have many opportunities to discuss ways to increase our retention of students and helping more students cross the finish line. Whether their goal is a certificate, whether it's transfer, whether it's a degree, we need to help them get to that finish line. And uh, when you think about a sprint, the 100 meters in the Olympics is over in only about 10 seconds, so they get to that finish line very quickly. The finish line for our students takes more time than that. And when you think about graduation, that is the finish line in many respects for our students. That's an opportunity to celebrate their achievement and also to celebrate the role that we have played in helping them get there. Without our faculty and staff, without the tremendous efforts, and I'm just in awe of the incredible job that our faculty and staff do in helping our students get to the finish line. So convocation is the kickoff of the semester in some ways. And then graduation is the finish line for our students. And uh, the good news is, with a focus on completion and graduation, we shared with you last year that from 2008-2009 to 2012-2013, even though enrollment was declining, there was budget pressure on our four colleges in, Los Rios, in the Los Rios District, we have had a substantial increase in both degrees awarded and certificates. So that is encouraging. It should be uh, a cause for great pride at all four of our colleges that it's true at all four of our colleges. Degrees and certificates are up. The challenge is how do we go from being very good in helping students complete to being great and exceptional. Increasing the number of students who complete is going to take a group effort. And one of the things that I challenge all of us to do is think like a freak. I don't know how many of you are fans of Stephen Levitt and Steve Adum Steve, uh, Stephen Dubner and their work several years ago, Freakonomics, then their second book, Super Freak, and their most recent book, Think Like a Freak. 
And I know at our convocations, when I asked if anyone thinks like a freak, some people said they did. And some people were suggesting that someone around them thought like a freak. But it's actually a good thing. And in the second chapter of Think Like a Freak, Levitt and Dubner talk about what they argue are the four most difficult words for anyone to say. When you think about hard things to say, what comes to mind? Uh, let's see. I'm sorry can be, be very difficult. And in talking to people uh, at the different convocations, some people even disagreed with Levitt and Dubner and said the hardest words to say might be, I was wrong, or a uh, lot of different choices. I think their suggestion of the four hardest words are certainly among the most difficult to say. And they propose that, I think I said the four hardest words to say, the three hardest words to say in the English language are, I don't know. And the point that Levin and Dub Dubner make, I think, is a very sound one. It's not that all of us should be celebrating ignorance and saying we don't know, and it doesn't mean we don't care, which reminds me of the, the story about the coach who asked a player, are you ignorant or apathetic? And many of you know the comeback was, I don't know and I don't care. That's not what Levin, Levin and Dubner are talking about. They're talking about the willingness, even for experts, and really everyone who works in the Los Rios district is an expert in their subject matter. And the more expert we are, the more difficult it can be to acknowledge that we don't know the answer to really difficult problems. So by beginning with saying we don't know, we then have the opportunity to conduct experiments and approach problems in a different way. So being open to new things. And if we already know the answers, and the truth is we're getting good results for our students at all four of our colleges in the Los Rios Community College District, but to improve the results, we need to be willing to accept that there is more to learn and more to know. And once we cross that threshold, then we're able to conduct experiments and measure data. And measurement becomes very important, and there are new tools that simply didn't exist to help us evaluate how we're doing. One of the big changes in the world in recent years has been the impact that some new technologies have had on our lives. When you think about Amazon.com and uh, think like a freak, many of us have been at a meeting or a conference where you hear someone recommend a book like Think Like a Freak, and you've probably done what I've done. You've taken out your iPad or your smartphone. You've gone, gone to Amazon.com, and before the meeting was over, you had that book shipped probably before the meeting was over, it was almost uh, leaving the warehouse. And if you are an Amazon, Amazon Prime member, by the time you got home from that meeting, that book might already be at your house. So we could talk a long time about the, the sadness many of us share for the loss of small home-owned bookstores. But there's no question there is a big change that technology has brought through companies like Amazon.com. And now, if you want to read that book immediately, you could download it to your mobile device and look at it electronically. Same thing with Netflix, just completely changing the way that entertainment happens with uh, other companies that provide entertainment streaming. Very tough to sit through a program with commercials. And now, new vocabulary like binge watching for shows like House of Cards, where people watch the whole season immediately. And I would guarantee that everyone listening to this presentation probably today, unless you're watching uh, first thing in the morning, listening first thing in the morning, has probably already Googled to find an answer to a question. So these are uh, a few of the many examples of technologies that have really revolutionized how we live and shop. And we need to find a way that these tools can help educators help students. The question is, can these technologies help educators help students? And the answer is yes. The challenge is finding the best way to do that. And I'm very excited to announce that Los Rios has engaged in a partnership with a group called Civitas Learning. And they are trying to bring to higher education the use of technology in a way that will be transformative for us and for our students. The first application that we will be using at Los Rios is called Alum. And uh, a lot of interesting possibilities with Alum. We've talked about the need to retain more students. And Alum will help us look at key metrics like persistence and retention. 
And what's really exciting about Illum is that currently it's not that we have a shortage of data. We have a lot of data. The challenge is getting the data from a lot of different data sets and sources uh, in, in a package that can be useful. And that really is the promise of Illum, to bring a lot of the different data sets together and not just be looking in the rearview mirror, but actually be looking at ways in the future that can help students. One of many examples is the idea of a, a toxic course combination that uh, the data may show that there are certain courses that when students take them together, it's just death for their academic semester. And we have some anecdotal evidence of many of these types of issues. What Illum and Civitas Learning will help us do is bring data to the discussion and get us beyond the anecdote. In addition to the use of data, another exciting part about Civitas is the partnership that we are a part of and a broader learning community with uh, colleges from across the United States. Austin Community College, uh, actually located where the headquarters of Civitas Learning is, another very uh, active, engaged community college district, Valencia College in Florida, a leader in the community college world, and many other uh, colleges and universities across the country working with Civitas Learning. So we have the benefit of the predictive analytics algorithms. I think I said that right the first time. I'm not going to try again. But also a broader learning community. So much more to share with you about Civitas Learning, but uh, just a lot of excitement about the possibilities. So in conclusion today, technology and creativity together Provide us a way to chart a future course together that will serve more students and serve them better. When you think about a tool like the GPS, charting our course together is not quite as easy as just putting in an address and uh, being told when to turn right and when to turn left and where the traffic is. But the promise of technology is that we are able to use data in a way that is different than we ever have before. And these new tools that we take for granted in our lives outside of work now are becoming much more practical within higher education and the possibilities are, are very, very exciting. So look forward to many dialogues in the coming year about how Civitas Learning and other uses of data can help inform our decisions and help us do an even better job than ever before for our students. One thing I know for certain is that the road ahead will be exciting it will be filled with great opportunities for American River College, for Cosumnes River College, for Folsom Lake College, and for Sacramento City College, and all of our centers in the Los Rios District. I encourage you, if you have thoughts or suggestions or questions, always to communicate with me, either by email, K-I-N-G-B, KingB, at LosRios.edu, or give me a call or stop by. It is a tremendous honor to be chancellor of the best community college district in the United States and look forward to a chance to see many of you in the coming weeks and months ahead and do whatever I can to help you help our students.